Hello, beautiful creatures of the world, and welcome back to Coffee with Carrie Lynn. It's a beautiful day in the far north of Maine, up along the Canadian border in the crown of Maine. And I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you are as well. It truly is a beautiful day here in the crown of Maine today. It is in the high 30s. I have the window open. I'm sorry about the, the traffic noise, but it is, um, we've never had this. <laughs> We've never had this up here where the grass is green. It is the seventh green Christmas that we had since 1939. Um, so ending the year and beginning the year with green on the ground, spring lake temperatures, I'm keeping the window open. We're just going to have to put up with the ambient traffic noise. Uh, we do this in the spring, so this is not a new thing for me. People complain about the videos all the time in the spring because of the traffic. Well, we do not put up the meditation and wellness tent until June in the Outback 26. When I am in the Outback 26, I am with the farm animals, and that's what you hear. You hear the farm. But um, in the springtime, I am on Main Street, and Main Street happens to be a few feet from my house. And uh, I'm either underneath my pine trees recording, or I am in the, the fiber studio, in the recording studio, which we all know is a small corner of my kitchen that I'm relegated to, to do all my business out of. And the window is open because I want the sunlight, I want the fresh air. It's just, uh, it is. It is a make-do or a do-without situation, and that is what we are going to do today, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world. I hope you had a spectacular, an amazing, a wonderful Christmas. I hope your Christmas was full of joy. I hope it was full of magic. I hope it was full of abundance. I hope you feel blessed by your holiday. When I say abundance... I'm not talking about the Christmas swag that was left under the tree. I'm not talking about the stockings that were filled, that were hung with care by the chimney. Uh, I'm talking about the abundance of joy. I am talking about the abundance of gratitude. I am talking about the abundance of memories you made with your family. That's what I'm talking about. The little things in life, the sweet pleasures that we often don't know are the simple sweet pleasures of life until we no longer have them. We have a rule here at the homestead. If you come to my house ungrateful on the holiday, you're asked to go home. And that's just how it is. You know, take a break. Take a break from your troubles. Take a break from your problems. Your actions do have consequences. And when you bring toxicity or negativity into the space of other people, it does contaminate the energy of that space. And I'm not having it. I will allow you to tell me your story every single day of the year, but not on the dang holidays. We used to have a, we used to have a kid that used to call every holiday with another tale of woe or show up, and it was just, uh, it was just horrendous. So that's what I did. If you're gonna be that way, you're gonna stay home. Um, my misery don't like company. Don't like my company. It doesn't like my husband's company. And it sure as shit doesn't like anybody else's company. So I keep my misery in check often. More often than not. And um, that's just how it is on the holidays. I don't want things spoiled. We did a lot of memory making on the holiday because the children will only be their age that they currently are one time. So we have a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. And I made sure that there were plenty of pictures that there was video, and I did upload my video to my private um, Facebook page because most of the family do not live around here. And we're talking hours, 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 over 10-hour drives to get to where our family actually lives. So we live that far up in Maine. We live about 15 minutes from the Canadian border, and um, we're it. We're it. We're a select pod of seven at the moment, and... Um, there are a lot of grandparents and a lot of great-grandparents that live elsewhere. So I made sure I did a lot of videoing, and we put those videos up because I feel that everybody should be included in the holiday festivities. Um, and that's that was my little gift to everybody in the family that lives afar, well, afar from us, or we live afar from them. However, everybody wants to look at it. We all don't live together no more. And... Um, you know, it's just, it's nice. It's nice to include 
the grandparents and especially the great grandmothers um, that they have because uh, the great grandfathers are no longer there. So it's just really, really nice that the great grandmothers can just watch the joy, the children opening the presents. Uh, we do have, <laughs> they're not always angels and they're not always angels on video. So they get to see the shenanigans the kids, uh, the kids get up to throughout the day. And, um, you know, it's just a cool thing that we do. Anyways, our holiday was great and we all feel blessed here on the homestead and we hope that your holiday was amazing and that you feel blessed too and it's not over the celebrations aren't over yet we do um we celebrate straight through till january 6th we do include old christmas and um that's just our preference so our celebrations start on winter solstice and commence on january 6th we try to keep the spirit, the joy, the gratitude up all year long, but um, that's my main that's my main bag. Don't uh, don't be toxic in my life um, until after January sixth. If you could really do that, but especially hit if you can't, just hit the the right days. Don't be a mess on Christmas. Don't be a mess on New Year's Eve. Don't be a mess on New Year's Day. Don't be a mess on January sixth. And there we have it. Actions have consequences, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world. And people are forgetting that left and right. One of the consequences, if you are constantly toxic or constantly bitching about shit, kind of like I do on the internet, um, one of the consequences is people don't want to be around you. And um, people feel entitled to their anger these days, don't you think? I, I'm finding that people really feel that they can do that they can say, um, that they can be any way that they want. And it is their right to do so. It is their right of expression until they run into me. And then their right of expression becomes the right of my action, of your consequence. It's just how it works. I'm from Rhode Island, so up here, when, when, I, get, when I get miffed, People take a step back because I have that old Rhode Island attitude. You can take the girl out of Rhode Island, but you ain't going to take Rhode Island out of the girl. And that's just kind of how it works. I'm not one of these uh, docile country girls living in a, a more of a male-dominated culture. I'm going I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to speak my mind. I am an opinionated woman with the gift of gab, and I will tell you the what for and that is the consequence to your action at the moment. I don't know. Life is hard for people. Life is very, very hard for people. And it was a hard Christmas for a lot of people. And I do appreciate that. And I do know that. My children even had a difficult time this holiday season. It's just a fact. Um, housing is expensive. Vehicles are expensive. Food is expensive. Having children is expensive, clothing is expensive, and now stuff that tree with stuff. You know, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. So I do appreciate the struggle people are having, and um, I do not belittle that at all. But I also don't feel that the anger should really be escaping people the way it is. I, I'm... I fail to understand 100% why that is happening. I have my theories formed as to why people are um, very angry, um, very depressed, very anxious, very upset. I have my theories to that, but um, no, those theories I'll keep to myself for a little while longer. They, uh, they're not appropriate. <laughs> they're not appropriate for some uh, platforms. Anyways, long story short, actions have consequences, and I really think that people have to start understanding that once again. And um, it's just not all about you guys. It's not all about you. And for people that look like they have their shit together, life is by far perfect. It's just a different presentation. Um, that's all. We have a lot of things that happened this weekend on the homestead that really could have destroyed our entire holiday spirit. I went out to get the, the food odds and ends for my kitchen table for our Christmas dinner. I went out on Friday, encountered some very nasty, hostile people. Nobody, everybody was just into themselves. 
and uh, rude, rude. You can say hello to somebody, smile at somebody, which is often what I do. And usually, in in times past, I would get smile back out or wave or hi. Just just a simple a simple greeting because my mama made made uh, she raised me right, you know, and um, she made me have manners. And it's just a simple act, a simple act of empathy, compassion for another person. And I've always believed that, you know, you smile at somebody that may, you might be the only thing that was good in their life that day was that smile that you gave them that said to them, wow, this person doesn't know me, but they had um, the wherewithal to smile at me. So they must see something in me that I do not see within myself right now. So I've always lived by that, um, by that philosophy, be kind to other people, be compassionate, do not be cruel. There's no reason for that. There's no reason for um, what's going on in the world. There's no reason to be so self-absorbed either. Uh, life isn't that serious all the time. Like I said, we had some issues over the holiday weekend. Uh, people were, were very rude at the store. They had no manners. I didn't let it affect me. I just got my stuff and left. And I told my husband, I, I told the old man, I says, I don't want to do this on Saturday because it's going to be even worse. So Saturday we took a, we did our regular routine. We go to the secondhand shops on Saturdays and we just kind of poke around, see what we find. And I found a lovely new chair for my studio because I wanted to, to do some redecoration here in the small corner of my kitchen and uh, have a little, a little more comfort while I gabbed at you. And um, so I found a beautiful chair for very little money, and that was Saturday. And I picked up the very last odds and ends uh, that I was going to pick up, little did we know. Because we have a Christmas Eve tale of woe to tell. Every Christmas Eve for the last six Christmases, we have gone out and something has gone wrong. Uh, it all began with we were doing a good deed for someone six Christmases ago. And, um, you, and you, all, you all know the saying, no good deed goes unpunished. Well, after we did everything for them, uh, we were on our way home. And this was six years ago. And we were coming up a hill. And we hit a patch of black ice. And we were all over the road in the other lanes. Now, there's two oncoming lanes of traffic. There's us. We were in all three lanes. We narrowly missed hitting other people. I don't know. It was like by the grace of God, we were not in a real mess. Uh, we hit nobody. Somehow the old man kept control of the vehicle and we, I, I saw these cars coming at us head on and by the grace of God, this is my Christmas story. We missed every single car. We missed every single car, uh, did not hit anybody. And I, to this day, cannot figure out how or why that happened. And um, anyways, we ended up in a snowbank. And we ended up being able to use the four-wheel drive and some pushing to get us out of that snowbank. But we were the only... Um, we were the only ones involved in that accident. And every single Christmas Eve, from that Christmas Eve on, something has gone wrong. This year... We were off because I, I, I needed one or two more things, not really important. It, it wasn't something that was a, a do or die situation. And we trek off in the car. We got about six miles from the house and the car overheated. And, you know, it's one of those one of those cars that are all computerized, not like the 1980s adventure van that we have. Um, it was the other car. The one you can't work on. So it, I did salvage a backyard mechanics video, a short for that. Go watch that. It's actually really, really funny. Uh, but it's off to the shop now. It'll be off to the shop for a while because it looks like it was the water pump or worse. So I know. It's terrible. That was my Christmas Eve tale of woe. It happens. So it's going to be very expensive to fix this, and we know this, and we are going to be without a vehicle for a while, and we know this. And the adventure van is still, uh, the transmission still being worked on because we were like, hey, we don't need it till the spring, and you know, 
if you are, if you know if you do backyard mechanics and you know a lot of the mechanics in your area, they all become your friends. So it's just like it wasn't a rush. Now I got no vehicle. Oh well. But it continues. We are continuing the celebration. Yesterday was the full moon. Happy full moon to everyone. I hope that you did your journaling. I hope that you set your intentions. And I hope that the intentions that you set under the new moon two weeks ago uh, start coming true for you. I hope things start moving and shaking for everybody. And now we are moving into New Year's. We don't do a lot for New Year's Eve around here. We just do enough. It's generally the old man and I, and we watch movies from the 80s. That's when we were dating. So we watch either The Breakfast Club or we watch Pretty in Pink, and then we watch you know, The Terminator, Species, something for him. One for him, one for me, and we hope to stay up till midnight. Uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. At midnight, we have an old Celtic tradition. Celtic tradition, if I could only speak today. We are both from Irish backgrounds. My grandfather's parents were from Ireland directly. They immigrated to the United States. My grandmother's grandfather, he was from Ireland and immigrated to the United States. So we have a lot of the um, the Irish culture in our life. Uh, my husband's father was Irish. And um, we also have Polish and we have Portuguese and we have the English in there. But uh, we do a lot of Irish tradition on the New Year. One of the things that we do is on the New Year, the youngest dark-headed female in the home, um, you start at the back of the house and you sweep out the old year and then you sweep in the New Year. For my entire life, I have always been the youngest dark-haired female in the household at the time that the clock struck 12. In the event that I do not make it till midnight, my front door cannot be open until I get up in the morning and do that. So everybody knows they're stuck inside till I get out of bed, which is generally early because I'm up with the chickens, because I have a farm, and uh, I don't get a lot of sleep. I have a, a, a livestock farm, which is different from a vegetable farm, and in the winter you can at least relax on a veggie farm. If you have a full-blown homestead and you have livestock, there is no rest for the weary or the wicked around here. And that's just, I'm the most wicked thing in the house, so don't worry about it. Um, it's just a tradition that we do. I would love to hear how other people celebrate their New Year's Eve traditions. Uh, we do not go out and do anything fancy. Uh, we do incorporate, my grandmother was Polish, himself's mother is Portuguese, so we do incorporate the, um, we have kielbasa, we have, uh, I make guamki, I do pierogi, and we do cherise, and um, then the next day, New Year's Day, I will actually make Portuguese soup, because I have the most awesome mother-in-law with the most awesome Portuguese soup um, recipe, so we get it all done for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and we, the party continues. The party absolutely continues around here until January 6th. I would really love to know what you guys do for, for your different traditions, whether it's Christmas, whether it's New Year's, whether do you celebrate old Christmas, and what do you do on old Christmas? For me, old Christmas is a day of relax. You do nothing on old Christmas just like they did nothing on old Christmas way back in the 1800s. Um, a way to step back and relax. I do a lot of reflecting um, this particular week in December into January. Um, I, I reflect a lot on the year that has passed, kind of clean out the regrets that I may have had. Um, there's been good moments of the year. There's been not so great moments of the year, such as life. It has its ups and downs, its hills and valleys. But in the end, um, if you stay focused on your goals and you really try to meet humanity where you need to with compassion, with empathy, with kindness, because um, those are really at the end of the day, um, when this world no longer exists for us, that is what your measure of your character is based on. What you did for other people, how you helped people, how kind you were to people. Uh, how graceful you were in moments that were absolutely hellacious. Always have grace in your life. Be a graceful person. 
I always say, if you meet hardships with grace and you don't strike back, you know, everybody's like, turn the other cheek, but you don't strike grace and you you do not strike back and you handle every situation that comes your way with grace, that's the measure of your character. Um, With that said, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, either here or on Rumble. I'd love to see more people uh, following me on Rumble. I am also on X at Coffee with Kerry Lynn. And across the board on all the platforms, video or audio, we are Coffee with Kerry Lynn. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And hopefully I'll be back this week before the new year begins as the new year is ending i as the old year is ending and the new year begins hopefully we'll be back with at least one more video or podcast um to close out the year for us ladies and gentlemen beautiful creatures of the world thank you for listening to my opinions and suffering through my gift of gab carpe diem beautiful creatures because no one promised you a tomorrow